A group of restaurant owners in Jamaica Plain is trying a new way to close the gap in compensation for their workers. In this case, it's the gap between the workers you can see and tip and the people in the kitchen. And to fill the gap, customers at Tres Gatos and the Center Street Cafe have started paying an administrative hospitality fee. To talk about their decision are two of the owners, Keith Harmon and David Doyle. Uh, thank you very much for being with us. Uh, of course. Thank you for having us. I want to start with uh, Keith. This is an idea. Uh, you're not uh, the first people to come up with it, but there was a place, I guess, in New York City that recently started doing this? So, yeah, I think uh, it's not a new idea. It's been the problem itself has been a big topic among uh, industry, um, uh, media, and chat rooms and our relationships. Uh, and, but just in November, Danny Meyer, who is probably the country's best known restaurateur, uh, starting with Union Square Cafe and going forward into 12 other restaurants uh, over, the, over his career, he announced a major change to his business model and how he charges guests for their experience. And that what the whole target of that change in business model was to address the wage gap between front of house tipped employees and back of house um, hourly kitchen employees. Uh, it's something that we had already been talking about and worried about and working on for about three years. And we had come up with a solution about a year ago that we thought would be really effective. And we took Danny's example of coming out and really bringing it out into you know not just the food media but the national media as a really great opportunity uh, to roll it out in our own restaurants. David, uh, talk about uh, the way the restaurants made this public because you didn't just do it and put it on the menus. I mean you actually um, you had a letter to people you wanted to explain to people uh, so uh, why did you decide to do it that way? We really didn't want to do this as a footnote on the menu. Um, we really are very proud of this attempt to try to make both restaurants more equitable places. Um, so we, we discussed it at great length, uh, including my wife, who's our business partner, and we're really careful with the crafting of the language of that letter. And then we had an all-staff meeting. We decided it was really, really important to meet with back of house and front of house at both restaurants describe uh, exactly what we're doing, the language. They all had a chance to look at the letter. And then shortly thereafter, we decided to implement it um, and release that letter to the media, as well as print it on our menus. And from the very start, we emphasized to our teams that we are behind them in trying to explain it. We will be on the floor and help them explain it. But we really didn't want it to be seen as something that we're trying to uh, do as a footnote. We really wanted to broadcast it and and you know introduce it to the restaurant world in Boston as something that we feel is you know important for the whole industry to discuss. We, we thought we had to shout it from the mountaintops for it to be successful right. and not try and hide anything. Let me go back to the internal part here because mm -hmm. the gap between these two kinds of workers, uh, their pay gap, is, is getting bigger, but at the same time, you, you come out with a new policy where some people are getting a raise and some people are not. I, you had to be careful about doing that, didn't you? Yeah, we definitely have to be careful about it. And I think, you know, what makes it, what puts us in a unique position, I think, to implement this is that we have a really high level of mutual trust and shared work and visions with our entire staff. Um, so certainly we have decided to implement a policy that allows us to increase kitchen wages, not decrease front of house wages, and do it in a way that has minimum impact on the guests in the form of literally three cents on the dollar. Uh, so it was a risk, and as David sort of mentioned earlier, there was a, a little bit of a social justice aspect to it and a fairness aspect to it. But once we you know, announced it to them and talked to them about it, Honestly, they are 100% on board, and I think you know a lot of our people have worked in the industry for a long time, and we got so many people saying, "Wow, I'm really glad to be part of something that you're trying to address this because you know I've worked with so many great cooks and dishwashers and line cooks and chefs, and there's absolutely a compensation gap, and I really appreciate that." appreciate it that one, you're addressing it, and two, you're doing it in a way that doesn't take anything away from us. D David, in, in one sense, we're, we're talking about businesses that, that sell meals and try to make a profit, but talk about at least uh, Trace Gatos, because this is a business that has evolved, and you're really talking about here, not just meals, you're talking about a kind of a relationship with the neighborhood. Yeah, my, my brother and I started, with my wife, started uh, Rhythm and Muse, which is a book and record store in 1998, and that lasted for a little over 10 years. Um, my wife and I started brainstorming about how do we reinvigorate this business. Uh, so not coming from a restaurant background, we were a little bit naive and 
thinking about adding a tapas restaurant. Um, I met Keith, fortunately, shortly after Trace got this opened, and he has been um, absolutely essential part of the team since then. But I think what's really exciting for all of us, uh, Keith's been a resident of JP for a long time as well, is to see a book and record store evolve into a business that has three big pieces. One of those is a, is a restaurant wine bar. Um, so we have a long history in the neighborhood, being involved with nonprofits, being involved with art organizations. And I think what's exciting for us, again, going back to wanting to share this message, we're proud of it. Uh, we, we think it fits in really well with the, the kind of ethical background of the neighborhood. And we think it represents the best of JP, which is taking care of, take, taking care of our residents and trying to approach our business in the, the most uh, ethical way that we can. Keith, since I've never run a restaurant, it, it, it struck me that the simple way to do this would be to just you know, raise the prices on the menu across the board, and then you can decide how to break it down from there and, and not make a public narrative about it. So I'd say uh, absolutely that's, that's a reasonable first supposition and response. Uh, one, I would say every restaurant has tried that, right? So we've done price increases on a regular basis to try and address the problem. There's a mechanical, fundamental issue that makes it not work. And the simplest way to explain it is that, you know, when we raise prices to compensate our back of house team better, they come up and the servers also come up because people tip at a really predictable level on total sales for good reason, but at a predictable level when taken in large numbers. So the thing is, our underlying expense structure is always going to go up. Food's going to get more expensive. Uh, insurance is going to go up. All the costs in the business, there's inflation over time. So as we slowly raise the top line prices to compensate for that, the servers get a raise from the guests all the way along, which is great. And we're entirely behind our servers. But slowly what happens is that the servers go up and back of house stays the same. Then we raise prices and they both go up. And then same thing goes over and over and over and over and over again over time. So that's why they're diverging. It's like it's a mechanical, mathematical problem that comes from the compensation structures. And I think it worked really well back in the 80s. I mean, I've been working in restaurants for literally 30 years. There was a little bit of a gap then, and there's always been a gap. But over the last 30 years, server wages have grown by 200%, and back of house kitchen hourly wages have grown by 25%. And so, you know, what was fine back then has finally widened to a chasm that is really unsustainable. And I, I personally think that within five to 10 years, um, restaurants are either gonna have to make a, a, a small but fundamental adjustment to their business model, or there just won't be small restaurants anymore. So I'm obviously hoping for the former over the latter. David, uh, another supposition here is that you've got to pay good money to keep a good chef, but we're also talking about people like dishwashers. Explain how, how that works. So our dishwasher at uh, Trois Gatos has been <laughs> with our team from the very, very start, Hi, and guys. anyone on that team will tell you how critical a really solid dishwasher is. So, you know, Keith and I, from the very start, talked about running, a, running an operation where we don't we don't, none of us is below anyone else. We are all willing to wear any, any hat that is necessary. And um, everyone on the team is critical. So the, the, the thing that we really love about this approach is that it's really, really giving respect to um, people who often go unnoticed in the restaurant world. There's a lot of work that happens behind the line um, and out of sight even of the kitchen, and that includes the dishwasher. And we've prided ourselves on having a pretty tight team from the start, but we think that this measure will make both restaurant teams, um, you know, even more solid across back of, back of house and front of house. Thank you both very much. David Doyle, Keith Harmon from Tres Gatos, Sedestry Cafe, and soon to come, Casa Verde. <laughs> Coming in January, probably. In a moment, we'll hear about a program that expands access for local businesses to government contracts.